All right, guys, hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to review three emails that I have gotten from business owners trying to pitch me on their products and their services. So the reason I'm doing this video is because I run a social media marketing agency and to get most of my clients who pay me on a monthly basis, I have to send out emails and messages to other business owners trying to get their attention and trying to get them on a phone call so I can actually sell them my services. And so one way of doing this and one way of getting clients is by doing cold email. This is essentially where you find email addresses of people in your niche. Let's say for example, in my case, I run a marketing agency and I work with fitness brands. I'm gonna find a bunch of fitness brands, supplement companies and other brands that sell fitness equipment and products like that. And I'm gonna basically email them a standardized email to try and get their attention. So let's waste no time and let's get straight into the three emails. I'm gonna critique them, give my feedback, show you what I would do and what I would say instead of what they have said. And most importantly, I'm gonna tell you if they were actually able to get my attention as a business owner. Okay, so message number one, hey, hope you're having a great week so far. I'm part of the social media team at X, Y, and Z. Uh, we researched your Instagram page and you stood out, okay? We're looking to discuss any opportunities for a collaboration and potentially becoming Instagram partners, okay? So the first thing I'm seeing is that there's no personalization. They haven't said, hey, Adam, they've just said, hey. So that's the first thing I would change. The second thing is that the grammar is off, okay? So hope your, with a capital Y, that's off, and then potentially become Instagram partners. It should be potentially becoming Instagram partners. So the grammar is off, which can work in their advantage because it shows me maybe that it's not copy and pasted, but because I'm a business owner, I know that this is nine times out of 10, this is copy and pasted. This shows me that the person is probably not an English speaking native. This will naturally just make me assume that they're from some other country that I don't know as well. That's not a big factor, but it does influence the amount of rapport that I'm gonna have with this person. So the part I like about this message is the fact that they have said that they researched the best Instagram pages and I stood out, okay? So they're complimenting, so that's a really, really good strategy. I also like that it's very short and sweet. That's very, very key. What I would do in their case is actually show me what they've done for their other partners, because at this stage, I've no idea what being an Instagram partner looks like. I don't know if that means that we do product collaborations. I don't know, does that mean we help each other out with social media growth? I have no idea what it actually entails. So to recap on that message, here's some good points. It's short and sweet and they complimented me. Now, the points that I'm not a big fan of and the things I would avoid if I was you, they haven't personalized the message, so they've just said, hey, the grammar is off and it's also very, very unclear of what they actually provide. So that's what I would do in their case. So, that, so those are the things that I like and the things that I don't really like about this message. Okay, so we're gonna move on to message number two. So before even reading any of this, this message is very, very big. So that's something that I would change. I would keep this shorter because this is my first interaction with this person. I've never heard from them before. And they're sending me this huge, huge paragraph. So that's the first thing, change that. Again, no personalization. It just says, hi, hope this finds you well. So yeah, I would add in personalization. Now in this next line, I truly love, and they put in the name of one of my Instagram accounts and being a huge follower of yours on Instagram for a while. It's not perfect, but it's, it's better than a lot I've seen. You know, I truly love what your username is. That's pretty good. And then the fact that they're complimenting me, you know, they're telling me that they've been a big follower or a huge follower in this case, doesn't actually make that much sense, a huge follower, like a huge fan or a big follower would probably make more sense, but that is aside the point. Now, what I will say to them is that they've given me some metrics, okay? They've saying, we onboard a thousand new users a week. We're the hottest ranked app and we have a 16% click-through rate. So like they're giving me some stats on why they're actually a good company and they're getting good results. And then the problem I have with this is again, it's so big and they're just pitching me. They're not really asking me any questions. You know, they're not trying to get my attention. They're just saying, hey, hope this finds you well. And they're going straight into this big pitch. So this would definitely work, right? This, I can guarantee this definitely works with some people, but a better approach in my opinion would be to try and get my attention first before trying to pitch me straight away. So ask me some questions, ask me am I open to collaborations because we have an exciting new project where our current partners are earning 
this amount per month. You know, give me an actual reason to get interested. That's one way you can do that is show the person, here's the potential. If you actually wanna collaborate with us and talk with me, here's what our other clients or our other partners are doing. So they need to add some personalization. They need to ask me a question and they need to make it shorter. And finally, email number three. So I've blurred this part out, but they didn't say, hi, Adam. Okay, I was getting excited. I thought they were gonna actually personalize this one. They didn't. What they actually said was hi, and they put in the username of one of my Instagram pages. So I don't think that's a good strategy because I know that's just copy and pasted. What they should try and do is try and find at least a name or, you know, hi, whoever the owner is of X, Y, and Z, because when they just say hi at Adam Walsh or something like that, it doesn't really get my attention. I like that it's short and sweet again. They're going straight into a pitch. They're telling me exactly what it is. They've got an influencer search engine, contains 3 million creators, and they're offering me a free trial for seven days. So I would actually say this isn't too bad. You know, this is definitely things I would change if I was running this campaign myself, but it has got my attention. It's nice and short. There's no strings attached because they're saying it's a free trial. So that's definitely got my attention. Now, of course, the things I'm not a fan of, of the personalization, it's too generic. The call to action is not very clear. They don't actually include any link and they say Google us and they put in the name of the company. So that's obviously got something to do with they're trying to avoid spam filters and things like that. So that's probably why they've done that. Doesn't really give me a great impression as the end user because why would they not put in the website? Is it because the website is spammy or it's gonna pop up a lot of ads? You know. No, it's, it's not really giving me a good impression. Now, something I really, really like about this email is that very last line. P.S. If you sign up and reply to this email, I'll happily extend the trial to one month. That's amazing. Great job on that one, Thomas. I really like that. That's something I include in some of my emails saying, so for example, if we send over a case study to someone who is interested in what we have to offer, right? We've, we've started a conversation on Instagram and we've said, hey, look, we can send you a case study. They say, yes. When we send them that case study, I'll often put in a P.S. at the very end saying, P.S., if for some reason you can't open the case study, reply to me here and I'll send it directly to you, right? So it's given them that kind of feel that I'm a person, there's someone behind the email and that I'll personally do something for you. So I need to change personalization and yeah. So my battery is actually gonna die guys. So I'm gonna have to wrap it up for this video, but those were the three emails that I got. Let me know if you got value from this and if you want me to do more of these because I get a lot of emails on a weekly basis. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.